doing theological research and writing for long papers, theses, or dissertations is not easy. If it were, everyone would do it. But specialized software to track your research can make your life a lot easier and improve the quality of your end product. There are many choices on the market, but in this series on technology for theological research, I will use EndNote to illustrate some basic strategies to help you become a better researcher and writer. I'm Dr. Miller, and in this episode of The 10 Minute Teacher, I will give a quick introduction to EndNote 9. I'm using it on my MacBook Pro, but the software works just as well on Microsoft computers. As I mentioned earlier, there are a variety of software choices for automating bibliographic entries, but there are five big reasons I chose EndNote over all these other options. First, the simple layout. Second, the power to customize your content. Third, EndNote is more than just for bibliographies. It's a tool to organize your research. Fourth, integration automation of Microsoft Word footnotes. And fifth, and finally, the availability of high quality training materials. First, let me show you about the layouts. So the first thing you'll notice is the ribbon along the top that gives you access to some of the most commonly accessed features of EndNote. If I need more, I simply move my mouse up and I get access to the variety of menu commands. In addition, you'll see there's three main columns that I've set up. The column along the left-hand side is all of my library, and that's where I organize and coordinate all my books into a variety of groups. And I'll show a little bit more about this in another video of how to organize the library. Now in the middle column, you'll notice that there is a list of all the books and journals and uh, website, internet articles, anything I've gathered over my years of research. You'll see at the top of this center column, there's an opportunity to search and to find information. I have a pretty basic about author and title. And again, I'll show you about searching and how to add resources in another video. And then finally, along the right hand side, you'll see this column contains detailed information about whatever resource I have highlighted. In this case, I have this uh, book by Adler that's highlighted, and there you'll see the information. So this is also gets to the second feature of what I talk about in terms of the power to customize content. So this is the layout I prefer, but you'll see along the top here, there's all kinds of layout alternatives. So you can get rid of information, you can make it as complex or as simple as you'd like. There's all of these options that are available that you can see. But for me, again, I just prefer this layout. So it's one of the default ones that come with it. And that's what I start with. You can also customize each resource. In this case, it's a book. So I have it as a book. But you'll see all of these options are built in. And these allow you to select the kind of resource you're cataloging for your research. It controls what fields are available in this pane so that you can make sure that all of your resources have the right information for the bibliographic entries. In addition, you can also customize the kind of citation you want. So if it's MLA or APA, Chicago, Turabian, all of these are great. Now, one of the most customizable features of this that I also love is that you can make this specific to your institution that you're studying at. So I created this based off Turabian, uh, specific to Southern California Seminary where I did my, uh, my recent master's, but also where I teach. So this gave me the ability to take a basic formatting that's acceptable by everyone, Turabian, well now we're in Turabian 9, and then customize it to the uniquenesses of my school. And I'll be creating another one of these for my PhD work that I'm doing so that all of my footnotes and endnotes, all that bibliographic information is customized to the specifics of the institution I'm studying at. This leads into the third benefit of EndNote in that it's, it, it is more than just bibliographic entries. It, it's a tool to organize my research. And by that, I really refer to two things. As I pointed out earlier, the pane along the left-hand side, you can see here that I've created all kinds of groups. So these groups allow me to put together collections of resources so that I can easily remember and access where they at. So in this case, I'm beginning my PhD work. So all the coursework, I'm going to have a specific group for every course underneath that. And now my list gets more refined as I go. Uh, you can have 
specific groups that are built just for custom groups. So for the great books of the Western world that I'm working through, uh, I can create a group just of those references there. So again, under larger categories of ethics or philosophy of science and apologetics, whatever you might want to do, you can organize this. I also use it to organize my own publications. So here I have a list of all the resources, books and journal articles and a variety of uh, web posts that I've made over the years that I've referenced in documents. And so I create bibliographic entries for all of my own resources. And I'm even working on a way here to take my print library that I have in my office and catalog all those books. So I'll be able to track which books are actually physically in my own library. So that's one way to organize the research. Another way that I really enjoyed is the ability to attach PDFs of documents directly into the bibliographic reference. So in this case, let's get Adler again. And if I scroll down along here, I can, of course, keep research notes in the fields itself. And I can have just all these other fields available. But right here, you'll see where I've attached the PDF. And so when I click that, it opens up that document for me. and here I have access to the PDF. Now I can highlight that document. I can do anything I want with that. And then it's always available. Once I save it and exit out, it's going to always be available. So there I am back. And anytime I open it, it's saved there. And I'll, and I'll show more on this and how to do uh, research and note taking and attach it to EndNote again in another follow-up video. This leads then to the fourth value I found in EndNote is that's its integration automation with Microsoft Word and the footnotes. So if I go over here to my Microsoft and if I have a document and so I'm typing along and want to take my footnotes, I go here and I want to just insert a footnote, right? Now, where do I pull this? Where do I go? Well, I'll show some specifics on this, but the nice is you'll see the EndNote creates a, a tab built into Microsoft Word where I can then take and I can just select my citation. I can customize it. But here you see there's the default. It's integrated right into my footnotes. Fifth and finally, I want to look at the last element of EndNote that I think makes it the right kind of purchase. And that's the availability of high quality training materials. So here I am at the EndNote website, EndNote.com. And of course, it gives some information on here and how to research and its value. But if I click on this training tab, it actually takes me to uh, the Clarivet website. And here I can find for whether I'm an instructor, uh, for you know trainers, for students, all of these options I have for training. And there's both written and video resources available. So one of the most important things about any software you choose is making sure that when you select it, that these kind of resources are available, that there's a community of people that use these that are willing to give help. If you're not great at software, you want to make sure that lots of people use it and lots of people are helpful in giving tips and information of how to access uh, and get the most out of using your software. So that's it for this intro video. Be sure to check back and look at my other videos on specific techniques and strategies for using EndNote for theological research.